to you now, Brenda. Okie dokie. Hi, everybody. So today I'm gonna like make a brief summary of what I have like experienced through this year uh, in my research internship in Leo's team. And well, uh, this is one of my last days. I think it's the last one. So I think it's like a good exercise like to uh, look back and uh, think about all what I've learned. And so, yeah, I call the presentation a fruitful journey because I think it has been really enriching for me. And so this is how it all started uh, with this tweet. I talked to Leo one day and asked him if I could like uh, be in his team and learn uh, from him. And so I, in that time, I was uh, an undergrad that had a little experience programming because I had some classes at school, but still I was not very confident about doing it. And so I wanted like this experience to uh, gain that confidence and uh, feel better when programming in R. And I think what the all the work I've done during these years could be like uh, summarized in three parts. The first one was updating spatial IBD. Uh, as you know, this is a package uh, that was coded by Leo and uh, all other people from the team, which is like, uh, has a purpose to visualize spatial transcriptomics data in an interactive way. And the objects to uh, like save this data, uh, there was a, an object called single cell experiment that is designed to have data of a single cell experiment. And then a group, uh, Leaded by Dario Riccheli, created a new object called Spatial Experiment, and this has like a more accurate design to uh, store all this information. So what we wanted to do since the beginning was like uh, putting our data in this new object, uh, and that obviously. Uh, had as a consequence to modify some of the functions of the package. So this was the task that I uh, started performing. And well, at the beginning, it was difficult to me because uh, something that I've learned is that coding is difficult, but reading others' code is also difficult. <laughs> and well, it, it has like a... Uh, mm, how do you say it? A big challenge in it. And you can also learn loads from it. So uh, this project, uh, as a result, we published uh, a paper. Uh, you can see, see it uh, here, Spatial LIBD and R by Conductor Package. And this was some months ago, summarizing all what the packages and all the uh, updates we did. And also this wasn't like just, you know, like changing the code and that's it. Because uh, the people that were designing the package that contained the object were updating it and updating it and updating it. So we have to keep like updating it as they uh, did it. And also uh, we had another experience that was uh, with some people of Heidelberg University and they had this spatial transcriptomics data also. So they wanted to uh, like use our package to uh, store the data, to visualize their data. So 
that was also like part of it, like doing the package, like also flexible to mm, be used by other people that wants to visualize their special transcriptomics data. And here also I'm showing uh, a, a paper uh, published by the authors of this package, special experiment that contains the object. As when we were like updating our code, we uh, made some mm, comments to them about how the structure could be and could work for the data in general, based on our experience and observations. And you wrote a blog post and gave a talk. Uh, yes, I wrote a blog post and I put the link in some uh, in some slides ahead. And yeah, the other part was really uh, I had a lot of fun and I learned loads uh, and it was, uh, Abby's not here, right? But, but yeah, this was really fun. Uh, Leo uh, asked us, Abby and I, to work together in building an object that contains the spatial DLPFC data, the one that was produced by uh, I don't know if Terry is in Kristen's lab. And so it was like uh, doing some, you know, putting the data in the right places, but also doing some uh, re reduced dimensions and all that kind of stuff. And I think like having this experience to do it with Abby was really enriching because we could like talk and you know, get stuck in some parts and try to figure out how to continue. And yeah, I really enjoy the part and I'm really uh, appreciate working with Abby. And the last part of this uh, internship was I started doing some exploratory data analysis on smoking mice, rna seq data. And so the idea is that we have uh, some mice that uh, were exposed to smoke and another group of mice that were exposed to nicotine. And so these mice are like teams and they have like their pops. So the idea is to see what's the effect on the dames, but also in the pops and well, they took like brain samples and also blood samples. And I started like doing some exploratory uh, plots. And although this was short and was like the last part, I think I learned loads. Like now I feel more confident uh, using ggplot. Thanks, Luis, and thanks, uh, Nick, that they really helped loads. And well, I really uh, wanted to do this part because I think like almost in every project there is like an RNA seq data part, so it is important like to uh, know how to analyze this data. And other things I learned and achieved during this time. First, as I mentioned before, I feel more confident. When I'm programming, uh, and I I think like I'm able to if the code look looks really difficult, I'm able to look in places and like don't get desperate and figure out what to do. Also, it's not just about learning how to code. Mm, I have also acquired skills like for my scientific. Uh, life and general life. For example, I think I improved in uh, organizing my stuff, like the things I have to do. And that was really good advice by Leo. And also what it's like to be working in a good environment and have a good mentor. I think that's really important because mm, 
I was thinking like, what are the criteria, the right criteria to pick a lab? And now I know that it is not just to love the topic that, or the questions that that lab wants to answer, but to have a good environment, a thought provoking environment when you, where you can develop, where they see your value as a scientist, but also as a person. And I think that's quite important. Um, also, I understood the importance like to make yourself known to other people because this will open loads of doors for you in the future to have like more opportunities. In my stage, well, I want to do a PhD, so mm, I don't know, like generate opportunities to yourself to uh, improve, connect, collaborate, and learn. And I learned this through Twitter. Twitter, like Leo taught me how to do good tweets and also having a web page. Also, I learned how to do a blog post. Like, I think also that's quite relevant because you like have to make it understandable to other people, communicate what you are uh, working on. And also I received really good advice in how to do the next step. And for me, it would be the senior year and my senior year, which I, in, I have to do a research internship and also a PhD. And I think that's it in general. And I feel really thankful to all of you who, all the Leo, Leo's team and the people who work uh, closer to me at the beginning, I also received loads of sessions with uh, Josh. And well, I want to thank you also, Leo, like for taking the time to teach me uh, for all the patients and mm, for this great experience. And so thank you all. Uh, congrats, Brenda, and uh, we'll miss you. We'll miss you. Me too. <laughs> Loads. <laughs>